The Detroit Lions host the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night in week four. And right now at the making of this video, the Minnesota Vikings are up 14-0 on the Green Bay Packers, trying to improve to 4-0, and a team that we thought was going to be at the bottom of the division. But we're going to have a talk about that as the for the nightcap, the after dark video. So be re ready for that. That's probably going to drop doing, during uh, Sunday night football. So, But the Lions are, again, in a must-win situation. Now, this would be great. To win this game, drop the Seahawks down to three and one. We move up to three and one with the Minnesota Vikings right now, seemingly to be uh, four and on the way to four and zero, oh, and, and that's going to make the team the game between the Lions and and uh, Minnesota Vikings that much more important. But going into if the Lions are able to win this game and go to three and one into the bye week, we probably get Frank Ragnow back after the bye week and come out against the Dallas Cowboys quite healthy, right? And then we have the Minnesota Vikings, I want to say within three games after that. So Dallas Cowboys, it's either Minnesota, somebody else, and then Minnesota. I think Minnesota is the third game down the stretch. But Lions have to win this game. They have to win this game. And here is the, the uh, let's, let's do what we usually do. The matchup predictor from ESPN actually have the Lions favored by 62% to 37.7%. And we'll bring in the injury report for the Seattle Seahawks when we get there. Geno Smith, seven, 77 for 103, 787 yards with three touchdowns and three interceptions. So not that much different from Jared Goff. They've thrown the ball almost, they got almost the exact same stats, but the Seattle Seahawks are 3-0, but you got asked the question, who have they played, right? Jared Goff, 70 for 106, 723 yards, three touchdowns, four INTs. Zach Charbonnet is the leading rusher for the Seattle Seahawks. Kenneth Walker is expected to play tomorrow, though. 40 carries, 141 yards with three touchdowns. David Montgomery, 51 carries, 231 yards, and three touchdowns. Receiving leaders. Jamison Williams only had nine yards last week and still leads the Detroit Lions in uh, receiving 11 receptions for 209 with one TD. D.K. Metcalf, seven receptions, seven, 17 receptions, I'm sorry, 262 yards with two touchdowns. We go down to the injury report. Here is, well, pretty much this, th this is a big deal. This could be the difference in the game. Leonard Williams, their defensive end is out. Byron Murphy, defensive tackle is out. Uh, linebacker out. Jerome Baker is questionable. Boye Mafe out. I mean, these are all dogs on this line, and they're all out. Uh, Jerome came from Miami, and he is questionable. For the Detroit Lions, we already knew this. Ify Melifonmu on IR. Uh, Marcus Davenport, IR. So we knew these guys, and this was brought to our attention yesterday. Frank Ragnow, we knew that. Brian Branch is the added list. This is the ad he, He's been added to the list, and he is... It's his estimated return date. That's funny. Tomorrow. So that'd be huge. But he's listed as doubtful as has an illness has nothing to do with his concussion. That'd be a big blow if he can't go tomorrow. Last five games. The Seattle Seahawks are including the preseason are on a four game win streak going four and one over the last five games. And the Detroit Lions are also four and one over the last four games. We really if we could score in the red zone then we would have been 5 and 0 but you know if if was a fifth you know what they say so here we go the detroit lions in my opinion even though it's tomorrow concludes the first quarter of the season can you believe it with the way the nfc north is going the bears look like they're going to be at the bottom and the green bay packers could be a, a very close second but at the same time with a win tomorrow the Detroit Lions will be 3-1. If the Minnesota Vikings continue to do what they're doing to the Green Bay Packers, they'll be 4-0. And, oh. and the Green, I'm sorry, yes, the Green Bay Packers will then be 2-2. Two and two. The Chicago Bears look like they're going to 1-3 and three at this moment. So they look like they're going to be at the bottom. This NFC North race is going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Don't forget last year, and I know I'm, I'm focusing, we'll get to the Seahawks, but I'm focusing on... Anyway, I'll say that for the latest, for the later video. How can the Detroit Lions win this game? A lot of people banged up in for the Seattle Seahawks, okay? We can run on them. We need to run, lean on the run. That's what we need to do. 
They got Jackson Smith and Jigba, DK Metcalf. They got Tyler Lockett. As far as I know, all the three of them guys can go. We can't allow the same thing last week. We, we can't allow for all these guys to go off. We can, we can hold to one. If one of these guys goes off, that's going to be something uh, that we can handle. All right? But we got to, to me, you got, I mean, they can kill you anywhere, right? So, again, we have to contain Geno Smith. You're going to hear these previews are going to be rinse, repeat. We were able to do that with Kyler Murray. I think it was 25 yards. He had us with a pretty decent scramble early in the game. Contain Geno Smith. OK, we actually can get the Geno as well. We need to be able to bring him on the ground. That's one thing we didn't do last time. Alex Anzalone got like this fluke sack and that was the only one of the game. We need to win. We need to contain those three guys. Kenneth Walker is going to be back. Now, I'm not worried as much about uh, Kenneth Walker simply because the Lions run D is top three. Right. So if we, we can continue to do that. We should be able to continue to do that. Um with that front four, that for those front seven, especially with Alex, the tackling machine being back. I think for us, as far as stopping them, we got to contain DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, and Tyler Lockett is sneaky good. He can get out and get you, get a win. As far as the Detroit Lions, like I said, lean on the run. Again, Jared Goff has to play turnover free football. He threw a pick last week, almost cost us the game. Now, there was some talk about, because uh, he was going for Tim Patrick. And it was a really, really bad INT. So there was some talk about, well, maybe Jared Goff, that Tim was supposed to do this, and he didn't do that. I tell you what, when, when Goff throws an interception, it's usually some type of miscommunication. I'm not saying he doesn't make bad decisions because he does, but it's some form of miscommunication. Lean on the run, all right? See if we can get Jamison Williams involved. There's some dogs in that secondary, though. So we might have to switch that up. We, not, we might not be able to go deep. But what I want the Lions to do is set up the play action. We can definitely run on these guys, and we have to project, protect Jared Goff. So can can Graham step up, right? Can whoever is taking uh, – well, Graham is going to move to center. Whoever's taking Graham's spot, okay, they got to protect Jared Goff because if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw somewhere that the Seattle Seahawks going into this game lead the league in pressures or something like that, but – they're missing some key guys as well. So that might not be as much of a factor as it was. So Jared Goff, turnover free. Get Jamison Williams involved. Lean on the run, all right? Set up that play action and contain DK Metcalf and those receivers. If two of them eat, we might be in trouble, but we can't let all three eat, right? We got, And contain Geno Smith, right? Get him on the ground. That's what we need to do. We only had two sacks last, last week from the six, yes, f six before that. So we need to be able to get to Geno, all right? Lions, who do I have winning this game? Tomorrow night, we're in the black. Calvin Johnson, we're honoring him tomorrow. Crowd is going to be crazy. We might be the 11th and a half man. If, if the, the, the 12th man, man is Seattle, we might be the 11th and a half. Plus, you know what? I'm just, I think the fellas are sick of the Seattle Seahawks beating the Detroit Lions. I don't even know when the last time, put in the comment section, when was the last time the Seattle Seahawks lost to the Detroit Lions, whether it was at home or away, it doesn't matter. When was the last time the Lions beat the Seahawks? They have beat us three, well, two years at our house, all shootouts. In 2021, they destroyed us. Russell Wilson's last year put up 51 points. Then if we go back to the playoffs, we know how they did there, right? They beat us. 28 to 6. And, and really a playoff game to me, we shouldn't even been in. All right. Lions, I got the Lions winning this game. The crowd is going to be uncontrollable. It's a night game, the first Monday night game for us of the season. We're wearing the alternate blacks. My helmet is on the way. I'm super stoked. Lions honoring Calvin Johnson. We come out stoked. We win this game. You guys know I don't do score predictions, but we win this game and we move to three and one. And that is Seattle drops the three and one and we keep pace with the Minnesota Vikings who will we will be playing very, very soon. As a matter of fact, I know we play them. It's Dallas and it might be the Colts after that or something. Let me see, because it's going to drive me crazy. We play the Cowboys and then the Vikings. So how huge is this going to be? How huge is this going to be? Because it is setting up that that. That game against the Vikings and Lions could be for first place at that point. But, of course, we got to handle business tomorrow. I think the, the Cowboys are super vulnerable right now. Two of their best defenders not in the game. Uh, they're missing another one on the, in the secondary as well. So, But tomorrow we got to take care of business, and I think the Lions do just that. Let me know your predictions if you do it in the comments below. Who do you think wins this game and by, you know, what's the score? 
Man, and remember, this channel is brought to you by viewers, subscribers, and members just like you. I wanted to make an announcement, man, because I almost forgot. You guys know about the the actual um, desk lion, the 10-inch desk lion that we have when it comes to Whitebeard Signs. $32.99 for free shipping. You can do that right now. And I have to update the description right now. I'm going to do that right after this video that Ryan and I have decided that we are going to do this. Times are tough right now. The season is going on. So what we're going to do is we are going to make it where for the remainder of the season, you are going, the promo code of LS15 has been upgraded to LS30. You'll receive $30 off your purchase, not not the sign. The sign is is the sign does not count. This is the signs for the big sign, not the tenant sign. But if you if you order one of the four King of the Jungle, the, the four signs behind me, the four sizes, you will get thirty dollars off your order for the remainder of the season. It was just a lot to keep up with. In addition to that, I figured that this would probably help both parties involved. So again, the promo code will be changed. Hopefully it'll be changed. It should be changed by the making of this video. I'm going to change it before I upload this video. So to be there, it'll run the rest of the season. Okay. And as far as the sign is concerned, these are free shipping until further notice. All right. When that happens, when that stops, I'll be sure to let you guys know. So consider grabbing either one of those. That would be great. You guys are awesome. This channel is brought to you by viewers, subscribers, and members just like you. You could be anywhere else on YouTube, but you choose to rock with me. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions. We need to get to, we need to win because Minnesota looking real good right now. But we're going to talk about that after dark.